Hey friends, so we are going to kind of wrap up unit 12 today. And if you are one of those people that were like, what? Yesterday? What? I'm confused. You showed me all this fun stuff and then you tried to make me do these problems and I had no idea what you were talking about. Well, I'm going to hopefully clear that up today with a lot of examples. So just hold on um, to your pencils because we're going to do a lot of examples. But I mean, that's kind of what this is, is trial and error by doing lots of examples. So let's remind ourselves what we're doing. We're talking about quadratic equations, and today we're going to throw something in called a quadratic formula, but don't worry about that yet. Again, remember to solve a quadratic equation, the first thing you have to do is you have to, it has to be equal to zero before we can factor it. Okay, I don't know if I said this yesterday, and I know I had some questions about that in the homework, and it's one of those things that I just kind of know, and, and I would have said it in class, but it's just kind of so intuitive that I did not think to say it, and for that I do apologize. Um, so once the equation is set equal to zero, then you are going to factor it completely to find the roots of the parabola. Lastly, when you have two parts, or maybe just even one part, you would set each part equal to zero and solve for x, and then if you so choose, you would check, okay? Once again, our quadratic equation looks like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. a, b, and c are the coefficients, okay? So let's try an example. Let's try an example of this and get rid of that. Oh, we'll get rid of all this fun stuff too. Here we go. Here's example number three. So let's look at this problem. So first of all, when we look at this problem, we see, okay, um, well, we can kind of factor this. I can see where I can factor this problem right now. So let's go ahead and do that. What can I take out of this left-hand side? What is common to both terms, 8x squared and 16x? What's common to those? So if you said 8x, you would be correct. When I pull an 8x out of 8x squared, it leaves me with x minus, if I pull an 8x out of 16x, it leaves me with 2. Now I have two parts of this equation. I've got a blue part and I've got a black part. So I'm going to set that blue part equal to 0. 8x equals 0. Solve it for x by dividing both sides by 8. So x is equal to 0. There's one of your roots. The second part is x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. And you get x is equal to 2. Okay, so you have your two roots right here. All right, so if I was going to do example number four, Four looks kind of like this. Um, same thing's going to apply. I'm going to look and see if I can pull anything out first. I'm going to look for a greatest common factor because remember, whenever we factor, we first look for a greatest common factor. Well, I know I can pull a 2 out of everything. 2x squared divided by 2 just leaves me x squared plus 8x divided by 2 leaves me 4x. And Negative 42 divided by 2 leaves me negative 21. Now I have two parts that are equal to 0. I have this first part where you have 2 is equal to 0. And then you have that second part, okay, where you have x squared plus 4x minus 21 equals 0, okay? Now that still needs to be factored. That 2 is equal to 0. That kind of just goes away. It's like dividing by 2 on both sides. It's getting rid of it. Because up here, if I had just divided by 2, and then you would have seen, seen 0 divided by 2, it would just have been 0. So we don't really have to write that. We can kind of just understand that that 2 kind of goes away. Now we want to think about factoring this guy right here. I need a ma chart. I need two numbers that will multiply to get me negative 21 and add to give me 4. Mm, 7 and 3, right? <laughs> this is the only factor of 21 I know. Okay, so you got 7 and 3. The 7 has to be positive, so the 3 is going to be negative. It needs to be positive because we need to get a positive 4 over here in the add. 
So here we go, x plus 7, x minus 3. Set each part equal to 0, so x plus 7 equals 0, and then x minus 3 equals 0. So right here we have x is equal to negative 7, and right here x is equal to 3. Those are our two roots, those are our two answers for this quadratic equation. Okay. So once again, if I were drawing my parabola, if I had a parabola, it might look something like this, okay, where it goes through negative 7 down here and 4, 3 up here. Okay, so far so good. So let's bring in number 5, and let's look at number 5. The first thing I want to do in number 5 is I want to go ahead and I, I want to divide this. I want to simplify this as much as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x squared is equal to. Now 3 will go into 147. 3 will go into 14. 4 times. Bring your 2 down. 3 will go into 27 9 times. Now this looks pretty familiar. This looks very familiar to last chapter. What's the opposite of a square? Square root, both sides. That square and square root cancel out, leaving me x is equal to, the square root of 49 is seven, but we need to say plus and minus seven. We need to address both the positive and the negative roots when we are talking about quadratic equations. Because remember, we have them going along um, or uh, along the x-axis. And so this means if I drew that parabola, it would kind of look something like this, where this would be positive 7 and this would be negative 7 right there. And you know these are ordered pairs that look like that. Okay? And you'll talk more about that come Algebra 2. All right. So a little bit more to practice with using the square root property. This is just the property that we used um, last time. And I just want you to look at kind of the solution sets that we're talking about. If x is greater than 0, like it was in the previous um, examples, if n, if the letter n is bigger than 0, and n is what x squared is equal to. So in our last example, x squared was equal to 49. That 49 right there is greater than 0. So it had two real solutions. It had plus and minus 7. Now if n is equal to 0, it would only have one solution. If n is less than 0, it would have no real solutions. Because remember, you can't have a squared term equal to a negative, okay? There is nothing times itself that would give you a negative number because even a negative 3 times negative 3 gives you positive 9. So just remember that. This is our property of square roots right here. So let's look at some of these examples. So we're going to solve number 1. Now I know I said it had to be equal to 0, but when you see it nice and set up like this, let's just solve for x. So let's add 64 to both sides. Now it needs to be set up equal to 0 if you are going to factor it. But in this case, we're just going to take the root of both sides. The opposite of x squared is square rooting both sides. So this is x is equal to plus or minus 8. That means it's got a root at positive 8 and a root at negative 8. Now that n that we are talking about in the property is that number 64. And since it was larger, since 64 is larger than 0, it has two roots. So let's look at example 2. Let's first of all solve for x squared. So we're going to add 24 to both sides here, which gives me 2x squared is equal to 24. Let's divide by 2 on both sides. So x squared is equal to 12. Now, here's my n. It is larger than 
uh, 0. So we will square root both sides. Square root here, and then square root here. So that would be x is equal to, and if I wanted to do, it takes 2 to bring 1 out, this would reduce to 2 square roots of 3. Um, I don't have a calculator sitting next to me, or I could tell you the decimal approximation for that if it allows. Okay, so if your answer says give a decimal approximation, go ahead and stick in your calculator and tell me. So looking at example 3, now this one I really want you to pay close attention to. Alright, this is already being squared right here. So the first thing I want us to do is I want us to take the square root of both sides. That square and that square root will cancel out leaving me x plus 2 is equal to the square root of 36. Now that n was greater than 0. So this answer right here is plus or minus 6. Now I want you to notice really, really, really what happens. There are two possible answers here. x plus 2 can be equal to positive 6 and x plus 2 could be equal to negative 6. So we need to solve each of these by subtracting 2 on both sides. So x is either equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 8. Okay, so once again there are two solutions and those are your two solutions. So let's grab this guy right here. So this is what we were just doing. We did this in the last example. And here's your step-by-steps, solving equations in the form of ax squared minus c. Isolate the squared expression, apply the square root property, and simplify the radical and solve. Sorry, my neighbor's getting a pergola built, if you can hear the hammering in the background. <laughs> um, so for example four, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to isolate the squared expression. It already is. So now I'm going to apply the square root property. I'm going to square root both sides. This makes it x minus 5 is equal to the square root of 21. Now friends, 21 doesn't have a square root. I'm going to leave it like that. But I'm going to also make sure I note that it's plus and minus. So then I know right here I have x minus 5 is equal to either the positive number that comes out of there or x minus 5 is equal to the negative root that could come out of there. Because it's going to be a decimal. It's going to be, you know, something like 4.6 something, something, something. So it could be negative 4.6 something, something times negative 4.6 something, something, something. Or it could be positive times positive. So now solve by adding 5 to both sides. And I like my answers like this x is equal to 5 plus the square root of 21 and add 5 here, add 5 here. x is equal to 5 minus the square root of 21. These are great and acceptable answers. These are two separate answers and they are perfectly acceptable, at least with me for right now. Eventually later on you're going to have to kind of get a decimal approximation to figure out where that is on your graph in a close enough approximation, but for right now you can leave it like that. If you would like to put it in your calculator, you definitely could. Don't let me stop you. All right, so let's look at example number five. Now we have a little bit of work to do before we start this. We've got lots of little guys we can kill. So I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides. Two x squared, I'm sorry, subtract two x squared. This is gonna leave me with five x squared plus six is equal to eight. Now I'm going to add 6, or I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to subtract 6 because it's being added. I'm going to do the opposite. That goes away, leaving me 5x squared is equal to 8 minus 6, which is 2. Ah, now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Divide by 5, divide by 5. This leaves me with x squared is equal to, oops, 2 over 5. I'm running out of room, friends. I'm gonna have to move this guy up here. All right. So now, as we look at this, it kind of looks like, oh my goodness, this is a hot mess. Well, we're gonna do the exact same thing we were doing before. We're gonna square root both sides. 
We've worked with this before. That square and square root cancel out, leaving me x is equal to the square root of 2 fifths. You've done that. That's the square root of 2 over the square root of 5. Remember, we can't leave a square root of 5 on the bottom, so we have to rationalize it. Times the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. That becomes x is equal to the square root of 10 over the square root of 25, which is just 5. And that's as low as we can go. Now, I want you to notice one thing that I didn't write back here at the beginning. This should be plus and minus. Now, is that going to matter as I simplified it? No, because I'm just leaving that plus and minus out front. So what this means is x is equal to the positive square root of 10 divided by 5, and it's equal to the negative square root of 10 divided by 5. Okay, so you've already seen this slide. Been there, Miss Peacock, done that. But you know what? What happens when you can't factor, when you can't factor or put into a mile chart and get an answer? But sometimes we can't. Sometimes it's just too hard. Sometimes we don't, there's no possible way we can do it. So we have some beautiful, wonderful thing that we like to call the quadratic formula. There he is, right there. The quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What? How are you supposed to remember that? We're going to sing it loud. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to sing it once. And then you're going to be happy I put the next slide in so you don't have to listen to me sing it twice. So, it goes x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yay! I hear your cheers. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Oh, I know you love that. That was just the best, wasn't it? I like that one. So, sometimes when we can't factor something, we have to use a quadratic formula. So, how do we do that? Well, here it is, right here. Here's your nice quadratic formula. We need to make sure that we, or your steps, I'm sorry, this isn't the quadratic formula. We need to make sure it's set up in the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. It has to be equal to zero. Then we will, we will identify the a, b, and the c. They will be number values. Then we will substitute these number values into the quadratic formula and simplify. Look right here. Quadratic formula has to be in descending order, which means it has to be the square, then the x, then the constant, and it has to be equal to zero. Okay. So... Let's check it out. Here we go. Here comes example number two. Just a little bigger here. Use the quadratic formula to find the solution set. Well, what is the quadratic formula? Funny you should ask. X is equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Now we're going to write this, making sure it's in descending order. Whoa. Make sure it's in descending order, okay? 
So let's identify our A, B, and our C. Our A is the number sitting in front of the X squared. It's one. Our B is the number sitting in front of X. It's five. Our C is the number who's sitting by itself. It's the constant. It's negative six. So now we plug it in. X is equal to negative B, negative B, plus or minus the square root of B squared. Oh, I didn't plug it in. I just wrote B, didn't I? Of B squared. Here, let me go back and erase this. I should, I should have written a five, dingy. All right. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. C is negative 6. All over 2 times A. Ha ha, let's simplify. Here we go. X is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 4 times, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. All over 2. Well, that's equal to negative 5 plus or minus. 25 plus 24 is, oh, look how nice that is, 49 over 2. Well, that becomes negative 5 plus or minus 7 over 2. Friends, here's why, where we have two separate cases. We have negative 5 plus 7 over 2, and we have negative 5 minus 7 over 2. Well, this becomes 2 over 2 or 1. So our first root is x is equal to 1. Our second root negative 5 and negative 7 is negative 12 over 2 and that's equal to negative 6 so x is, could also be equal to negative 6 so these are the two roots of the equation where the parabola is going up and on one side it is going through 1 and on the other side it's going through negative 6 okay Good job. That's not hard. I, I think it's easier than factoring, huh? What do you think? Maybe? Let's try one more. All right, so here's our problem. First of all, we notice it's got to be set equal to zero. It's not. Subtract eight from both sides to do that and get three y squared minus four y minus eight equals zero. All right, so now, I, this does not even look nice. I'm not even gonna try a mile chart with this. So I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. You ready? You like this part? X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus four AC all over two A. I hope somebody harmonized with me on that time. So here we go. Well, let's figure it out. Let's look at the A, the B, and the C. Well, here's my A. It's three. That looks like a Q. Here's my B. It's negative four. And here's my C. It's negative eight. So we gotta plug it in. Let's plug it, plug it in, plug it in. I'm gonna get rid of that real quick. So here we go x is equal to negative b. Now it would be negative negative 4. And we know a minus minus is going to make a big old plus. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. All over 2 times a. Making sure you have those negative signs where they're supposed to be. Super important. All right, so let's look through here. A minus minus makes a big old plus right there. We're gonna have a big old plus. We know this is going to square that, so it's gonna be positive. So this is gonna look like four 
plus or minus the square root of 16. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times 8 is positive 96. All over 6. Well, that's 4 plus or minus the square root of 2... 112. Oh, that's a nice one again. Over 6. Now, these are nice that they're factoring for us. So, we notice that 112 does not have a nice square root. So, let me show you your options here. Your first option is to get decimal approximations. Okay? If your answer says leave in decimal approximations and round to the blah, 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 you would find out and you would split this up and it would say 4 plus and you put in your calculator the square root of 112 is approximately 10.6 if I rounded to the tenths over 6. And then you would let your calculator figure that out. That would be 14.6 divided by 6 and then you get a nice decimal approximation here. X equal to whatever this is right here. Okay. Then you would also have to say 4 minus 10.6 over 6. That would give you a nice negative number, uh, negative 6.6 .6 divided by 6 or 1.1. I didn't figure that one out in my head. Um, so you would have your two answers that way. Now, if you are actually trying to be very exact and you were not asked for a decimal approximation, I want to show you how you could leave this answer. You could possibly leave this answer looking like this. I'm going to reduce the 4 and the 6. I'm going to reduce those 2 because 2 will go into 4 2 times. 2 will go into 6 3 times. Plus or minus the square root of 112. This for me is a fine answer. Okay. Now when you get into graphing and you get into roots and things like that, you might have to put them into this two separate answers. And that would be fine. You have calculators that help you with that. All right, so here we go. Um, your homework for tonight is that same worksheet you had yesterday. You're just going to do 11 through 22 using the quadratic formula if or when you don't want to factor it. Okay, so summary for today. Um, quadratic equations can be solved and they can either have two roots, one root, or no roots. And we kind of, we didn't get into no roots too much. Um, we'll, we'll save that for another time. Um, but to find those roots, you need to factor out the quadratic equations. Now that's great. You just use your ma charts or you can factor by taking the, using the square root property. But if neither of those will work, you need to use your quadratic formula, which is is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You're welcome. Bye.